There's a word, there's a word this morning for from God for, for you, all of you, especially you young girls this morning. What this world says is beautiful. This ideal of beauty that this world puts out for us that's oftentimes not even real. It's painted on and airbrushed to look perfect. There's a word for us this morning, girls. All of us, guys. True beauty. Where is it to be found? Those of us who have driven ourselves insane or tried to kill ourselves trying to live up to this standard of beauty that this crazy, sinful, rebellious world has put out. Or who have been oppressed and depressed because we have not been able to live up to this standard of beauty. There's a word for us today from there. From God. Instead of keeping up with the Kardashians, how about we start keeping up with Mary of Nazareth and her son, Jesus Christ. If you don't know who the Kardashians are, they're a rich, wealthy family on one of the cable news or cable channels, DLC, I believe, who have these uh, incredibly uh, airbrushed and, and manufactured <laughs> Girls who are all into all kinds of exploits. I really never watched it. I mean, you now Byron thinks it's a PPR chair. I sit around all day and watch Oprah. And now he knows I watch the Kardashians. So I've given myself away. <laughs> but instead of keeping up with the Kardashians, ladies, how about we keep up with Mary? A person in whom there was true beauty. Not the beauty of outward adornment, but the beauty of a humble and tranquil and quiet spirit, as it says in 2 Peter chapter 3. And her son, Jesus Christ, whom Isaiah had prophesied long, long before that he would grow up before himself like a young plant, like a root out of the dry ground. But he would have no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him, he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, as one for whom others hid their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account, indeed stricken and struck down and accursed by God. But he was blessed, and so was his mother, whom the world would lightly dismiss and regard of no account and no value. It was there that God chose to inject the antivenom of love into this world riddled with hate and violence and deception and pride and ego. But Mary's blessing, sisters and brothers, also came with a cross. A cross of her very own. A very, very hard burden to bear. God's blessing in her life would only amplify the cursing of the world around her and her neighbors and her, her friends. Can you imagine the whispering and the innuendos, the gossip, the strange looks on the faces of those in her little community, no bigger than the size of a couple of football fields? A scandal. <clears throat> And not only that, she would also bear the responsibility for raising a child. Difficult enough in any circumstances, but not just any child. As Charles Wesley said, as I shared with the kids, she had the privilege, but the responsibility of raising the one who was the son of the Most High God. Charles Wesley put it like this, the one who gave all things to be the great creator who gave all things to be. What a wonder to see him born of his creature and nursed on her knee. What a sight. The one that Mary had taught to walk would be also the one who would later walk 
on water. And the one to whom she and all of the disciples alike would have to learn to walk as he walked. She taught him to walk, but he would eventually teach her how to walk as he teaches all of us how to walk in the path of the cross. And the one for whom she was the first to welcome into this world but would be the first one to welcome her, herself, into the next. Hallelujah. Mary was blessed, but her blessing came with a cross. And it came with a sword. A sword that Simon, a prophet, would later say, a sword that would pierce the side of the Savior, her son. A cross that would crucify him, and a cross that she would have to bear, and a sword, Simon said, that would pierce her very own soul. But in that, in that what that seems impossible. That that was the salvation of the world. That there the entire world was saved. That there on that cross in Calvary, the world solution was brought into existence and into being. There was the good news in the midst of what seemed to be impossible. Surely, Isaiah says, He has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted Him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and upon Him was the punishment that made us whole. And by His stripes we are healed. Where did God turn when the world needed the ultimate solution? He turned to a lonely and humble little peasant girl named Mary in a little podium town called Nazareth. And there our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who truly is the way, the truth, and the life, was conceived and in Bethlehem of Judea was born. And on a cross at Calvary, there he died. And there is the solution that we need and that we see. solution and the Savior for our world today too. 